It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 223, entitled Ron Howard. It was recorded on Monday, the 26th of September, 2022. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and as always, I'm joined by some WordPress guests. We have this week Jess Frick, Michelle Butcher Jones, and Maciek Palmowski. We're here, obviously, to talk about WordPress. We talk about version 6.1 of WordPress, which is in beta, and also Gutenberg 14.1. What are the changes that have happened there? We talk about Rob Howard's article, which is all about whether or not plugin and theme authors are creating a false sense of the prices. Are they offering fake discounts? Publish Press has acquired the Meta Slider plugin. SiteGround has decided they're going to launch a EDD specific type of WordPress hosting. I've got a show tomorrow, depending on when you're listening to this, with Pete Neri, and we're looking for some sites to be submitted. AI images, what are they about? How do we get them in our WordPress website? Well, there's a new block which can do all of the heavy lifting for you. ACF has got an update. And finally, we talk about the brokenness of passwords. It's all coming up next on This Week in WordPress. This episode of the WP Builds podcast is brought to you by GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24-7 support. Bundle that with the hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients, and get 30% off new purchases. Find out more at go.me forward slash WP Builds. Hello, hello, hello once more. It's a Monday, um, which means, well, it's Monday. Um, and we do the show on a Monday. It's 2 p.m. UK time. I don't know what time it is where our guests are, but we're joined. Look, we've got a screen full of lovely people. I am so white today. Look at it. It's like more white than normal. Um <laughs> Who have we got today? We have Jess Fricks, one of our regular co-hosts. How are you doing, Jess? I am good, Nathan. It is feeling kind of like a Monday, but it's so much better because I'm with y'all. Yay. Thank you very much. Uh, Jess has been on the show many, many times, but she is the Director of Operations for Pressable. She is an iced tea connoisseur, and also she is a proud member of the Post Status community. Thank you very much for joining us today. And we're also joined by uh, Michelle Butcher-Jones. She's a a first-timer. This is the first time that we've had uh, her on the show. So very nice to meet you, Michelle. How are you? I am great, and thank you for having me on the show this Monday morning. You are very welcome. Where are you and what time is it? Um, If you're in North America, it's bound to be silly early. Sorry. I am in Carbondale, Illinois, which is um, almost in the southernmost area of Illinois where Chicago is on the north end. It is a bright and early 807 in the morning. Okay, okay. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry about that. Well, let me give you your proper introduction. So Michelle Butcher-Jones is the lead support specialist at Thrive Agency. You can see the logo uh, in her screen. She's the founder of Can't Speak Geek. She's also a jewelry collector and a book nerd. When you say jewelry collector, like any jewelry or particular like rings or I don't know which I bit? kind of everything um, the whole rings, lot. Okay. necklaces um, bracelets uh, we've started something we're working on the 50 uh, states by my age 50 and when we go to a new state I try to find a locally made jeweler to get a small piece from like I've got a leather belt from shine and uh, leather um bracelet from Cheyenne Wyoming I got a really pretty um turquoise ring from New Mexico when we moved our daughter down there for college um just little little fun things and I can also you know help the local artistry in that area Oh, that's really nice. Well, I pl- really a pleasure having you on. Thank you very much. And hopefully by the end of it, you won't be running away with your, uh, you know, your arms in the air screaming. Hopefully you'll want to come back on at some point. Last but by no means least, we've got Maciek Palmowski. How are you doing, Maciek? I'm great. I mean, it's Monday, but I have a day off, so <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's like a long weekend for me. 
<laughs> Matt Check, uh, Matt Check's joining us. I reckon you must be. I I don't know, five or six times now, something like that. It feels like, but um, it's an app, third. App. I think it's a third time. Oh, third okay. Time. It fe- well, it feels like more. I don't want you to take that the wrong way. <laughs> Um, Matt yeah, Chick is a WordPress worry, developer. I'll be back. I'll be okay, back. thank you. Um, he's a WordPress developer at Body as a WordPress ambassador, working at Body as a WordPress ambassador, I should say. Uh, after hours, he spends most of his time trying to find interesting news for WP Owls, which is a newsletter, or cycling. Yes, I should say if you're if you're keen on WordPress news, and you know that's what this show is about, so you probably are. Uh, just go and Google WP Owls and you will find that they've got a fabulous newsletter which they curate and they have guest editors and things like that. And uh, Go and check it out and get it in your inbox. Um, so thank you for joining all three of you. Thank you for any comments that are coming in. One quick thing, we say this every week, but I'll go through it anyway. If you're joining us on Facebook, then there is a slight hoop that you've got to jump through if you don't want to be anonymous. If you do want to be anonymous, that's fine. Um, but if you want to de-anonymize yourself so that we can see your avatar and get your name, you have to go to chat.restream.io forward slash FB. Once more, chat.restream.io forward slash FB and authorize us to see you. And that would be lovely. If you are also feeling like, you know, you'd like some other people, friends, colleagues, relations, enemies even, um, you'd like them to join the show, please send them a link. Probably the easiest thing to do is to send them to wpbuilds.com forward slash live, wpbuilds.com forward slash live and uh, get them in and uh, you can start chatting with us over there. And we've got a few people who have done that. Do a few introductions quickly, if that's all right with you guys, before we get started. Maya, hello, everyone from rainy Belgrade. Yep, Maya, I got the same. I got the rain coming down all day long, but, uh, you know, we'll be bright and cheerful anyway. Also, Rob Cairns, hello, good morning, WordPress peeps, he says. Uh, Rob's in Canada. Also, as always, Cameron Jones joins us pretty much each and every single week, and he's saying hello. It's bedtime, though, for Cameron, but I always appreciate him coming on. Um, we're getting <laughs> Nathan, your room reminds me of the Only Fools and Horses episode where Dell steals the reflective wall paint and paints the outlet. <laughs> if you're not British, it's highly unlikely that you've heard of Only Fools and Horses, but it was a fabulous comedy show back in the day. I'm American. I know that one. Okay. okay. It's actually <laughs> it's a really good show, um, but it probably didn't travel so well. And we've also got, who have we got as well? Paul Bedford who's saying good afternoon from a hot 32 degrees centigrade South Africa. Yeah, there's no jealousy here, Paul. I mean, I'm not feeling like 32 is something I desire. I'd rather have the 12 that I've got with the rain. <laughs> it's, no, 14. it's 14. It's 14 here I met. Okay, no. is that centigrade? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, at last, somebody in North America who speaks my language about, about the temperature. <laughs> when I was there at WordCamp US, I would constantly talk about the temperature because it was always really hot and I only have centigrade to deal with. And it very few Americans uh, talk in centigrade. So there we go. Good day, folks, says Courtney as well. Thank you for joining us, Courtney. Right, 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 right. Enough of that. Let's get on with the, the show. Uh, first things first, this is our website, wpbuilds.com. If you like what we do, let's go here. And click onto this thing and submit your email address and we'll send you uh, emails every time we produce a piece of content. Two a week. That's really all there is to it. But there's all our archives and live shows and stuff like that. WPBuilds.com. Okay. Let's get stuck into it. A couple of very brief bits. I I don't know if anybody's going to have a great deal to say about this, uh, you three. But if you do, just interrupt me when I've uh, you know when I'm handing it over. But it's just to say that WordPress it's inexorable march into the future. We're at WordPress six point one beta one. Um, it's released and it is ready for testing. It features. Um, version 13.1 to 14.1, all of those different bits of the Gutenberg plugin, which we'll talk about in a moment, have been rolled into 6.1. And the the highlight features are um, improved block placeholders, more design tools for blocks, fluid typography, improvements to the editor preference, and a new modal interface, the use of block-based template parts in classic themes, locking settings for inner blocks, and more. Um, I'm cribbing this, as you can see, from the WP Tavern website. Sarah Gooding links to the beta article, but there's quite a few nice bits and pieces in there. But if you're into testing things um, and you want to help the WordPress project, now may be a good time to do it. It's slated for release in about, well, what would it be now, five and a half weeks, something like that, 1st of November. 
and there's always things that need fixing. Add into that, we just mentioned Gutenberg 14.1. Um, we've got some new things which Sarah highlights once again on WP Tavern. Uh, the major thing is the menu selector has been removed from the sort of the heading area, so this area at the top of the page, and it's now been added into the sidebar, which makes it easier to use. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces as well, uh, which I probably won't go into. You can read the article yourself, but I'll link to those in the show notes. But if any of you two, three, sorry, want to mention anything that caught your eye there, feel free. Otherwise, I'll just move on. And if I Shameless. remember... Oh, yeah. You first, you first. No, you. Um, okay. This is the problem with these live things, isn't it? It's like, there's always, <laughs> especially when everybody's trying to be lovely and polite, which I really appreciate it. So I, I, I'll decide. Jess, you go first. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say one of the cool things that happens where I work at Pressable, um, we always have the beta version available. Um, I will say one interesting thing, though, and this is... Um, Unique to this year, uh, 6.1 drops on November 1st, and PHP 7.4 is end of life at the end of the month. Oh, okay. And so there's a very interesting window where you really need to kind of get up to date on both things at the same time, which is great if you only have one or two sites. But if you have a thousand sites, you probably should be working on that right now. Um, in, in your platform, Jess, in Pressable, do you manage expectations there? Do you sort of put up notifications saying that? Oh, this, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, you know, historically, we don't let you use uh, outdated versions of WordPress, um, which is also, you know, kind of a conversation topic where it regards PHP, um, because you certainly don't want to be on an end of life version. Uh, but at the same time, you don't really have a lot of time to test unless you use that beta version now. Right. To make sure everything's beautiful. Yeah. I know last week or two weeks ago, we got an email from both Flywheel and WP Engine, which are, of course, owned by WP Engine, saying that you, usually they will not support any end of life unsupported items, but with the mix mix up mashup with 8.1 right now for php they're like we're not going to require you yet um yep. at the end of the month but get in gear okay okay yeah thank you yeah it's well I, worth I think others are talking about it too yeah mm, okay thank you yes especially that the next php version may be a bit breaking especially for the older wordpress versions so <laughs> yeah Eight zero I mean, to eight one is isn't some... that bad. Exactly, exactly. But, but with the older four. version, as, especially that I remember that Juliet and Tonya were. I mean, they are repeating this over and over and over and over that we should connect the <clears throat> supported versions of WordPress. I mean, PHP versions with WordPress rather than uh, keeping the support for the old PHP versions, which yeah. There's and an interesting conversation to be had there for sure. Yeah, yeah, and 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 this would be, I mean, it would be bring it would bring benefits for for all of us. I mean, only not for the companies that decided to make an application that works only on PHP five six. But sorry, this this was. To... Oh, sorry, Malik. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, 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 no. From what I've seen, too, it's more themes that are having issues with uh, PHP 8 instead of plugins. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> also, many agencies will have problems, uh, especially when they build all those themes that are doing everything, some custom work that um, doesn't follow standards and we know how it sometimes is uh, during all, all, all the agency work when you don't have time for everything so you sometimes add this small little quick fix on another quick fix and when the version changes uh, all those quick fix fixes just collapse one yeah after another. right yeah. and <laughs> rob in the comments is saying i presume this number 325 refers to the number of sites you've got there rob 
Um, so 325, yeah, that's a that's a lot of expectations to manage you know, over the next five weeks or so. Um, yeah, let us know if you've done any, you know, preamble work with your clients to to make sure that they know what's going on. But yeah, thank you, Jess. That was a well well remembered piece. Um, Courtney's put on here that she would like m- me to invite Juliet. Um, and Tonya to be on the show. Courtney, when this is finished, can we connect on Slack or something? And and maybe you could give me an introduction because I don't I don't have the addresses. I don't think of either of those two people, and that would be fabulous. Um, uh, yes, says Rob. It is, and he's already started. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, you've only got to do about ten a day from now on, Rob. Something like that. You know, <laughs> nothing, nothing to. Oh, Rob, that's such a big, that's such a big load of work. Right. Sorry, Matt. Check. It, we had that moment where you and Jess were sort of talking over each other. Oh, and, I, and also with the new WordPress version, the WebP support as default is pulled out. Gone. Which, yes. Which kind of makes me sad because I am oh. a huge, I'm a huge WebP fan, really. I mean, I'm using WebP since uh, since a few years already. I mean, using. Did of you course, just take the hit picture... match check back back in the day a couple of years ago? Did you just think, well, you know, tough if if you're in the whatever it was at the time, um, percentage of people no, whose browsers I mean, don't support I... it. I mean, it wasn't a problem because using the picture tag, I was able to to make it available for everyone. So it wasn't a problem. It was always backward compatible. Yeah. And uh, I was using WebP since many, many years already. I mean, yeah. Um, I would say since if, if, even when Safari didn't support it, and it really was a great decision. And lately, I just decided that. But uh, I'm just using WebP as default. I'm I stop caring, especially for those smaller sites uh, that I do for myself or something. So WebP is the default format, and now I'm looking at uh, what futures, well, at, at, at the future uh, formats like Aviv, right, or something yep. like this. So yep. So I I re- recorded. To be an honest, episode. I see WebP. <clears throat> I see a WebP right now as a as this default one for the web. I know that it's not for everything. It's the format for the web. And uh, soon something will take over WebP place. And I already can see that in five years we will be having the discussion. Should AVIV be a default format in WordPress? AVIV yes. pulls out from version... Should we I discontinue know, 10. support 6, for JPEGs and things like that? Yeah, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the cycle will be the same, just the formats will change. <laughs> I was talking to a, a Google chap called Adam Silverstein uh, at WordCamp US about this actually just images and he was saying that um from okay so he was talking i don't know if this is coming out of google or if it was just adam saying this he said that 98 percent of of browsers now support webp and the other two percent are really edge you know it's things like really old versions of outlook um and things like that so i think yeah so i think much you're right curiously though Whenever I export an image and I create dozens of images each week, I always export them still as JPEGs. I have no idea. I've just got that muscle memory. I just click that <laughs> little icon and click export, and out it comes as a JPEG. But my understanding is that typically 20% is the saving um, in terms of data consumed, you know, hard disk used up. So it, across those dozens of images, it's, it is going to be megabytes and megabytes of needless storage that I'm uh, currently using. Jess, you you did a little cheer when you said when Matchek said that WebP had been pulled out. Do, do you not know? I not I am a fan of WebP, but we're not ready. Right, that's I the see. problem. Okay, we're not ready. Unfortunately, I think there's a big education uh, need here, mm. and I think. You know, Pressable's written about it. I've seen it written about extensively everywhere. But if you're not on the inside, and by the way, our esteemed host, who's wonderful and brilliant, is still exporting into J- or I know. JPEG. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah, just, yeah. there's not been that change. Yeah. yeah. And like having WordPress change it as default is fantastic. But I think we just need a little more time to talk through it. 
Um, I know even from a hosting perspective, there's been a lot of questions about what that means for us and our storage. Um, and so I think just a little bit more time and maybe work on it for the next major version. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I think I think it's curious, like devices. I, I no longer, well, I have a phone. My This is the only thing I use to take photographs now. I, it was a long time ago that I had a separate camera. But the phone and the cameras that I always had, the digital cameras, they always produced JPEGs. And it was kind of like ground into me from an early age that images, they're JPEGs. That's what an image is. And so I kind of default to this position. I'm not wedded to it. And because Matt Check has said that, next time I do export an image, I'm going to do it in WebP and I'm going to see just how, just how beneficial it is. As you say, is, go on. It is it the is, future. It is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, I remember that that one project when uh, we had this discussion about uh, adding WebP support. Uh, I remember that the company was like, no, we don't need it. But they were using uh, Amazon, so everything, all, all the transfer is paid by a megabyte. So when I mentioned how much transfer they will save, and they counted it with how much traffic they have. Uh, it was a very quick decision that, that yes, let's go with yeah. a great format right. future for us. We'll save a, a load of money. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Um, that was two bits that I'd missed out there. I don't think they were mentioned in these articles, but yeah. So Gutenberg um, 14.1, all of the changes that have come up until that point from whenever it was 13.1, they're going to be rolled into this beta. Uh, and you can find out on the article, which I'll link to in the show notes, how you can go and beta test it and uh, you know make sure that WordPress is as good as can be. Right, here's a curious article. It's it's kind of WordPress related, but equally it's not. I don't know of the three of you who had a chance to read it, but I'll I'll paraphrase it. This is Master WP. It's Ron Howard um, talking about uh, Rob. about. Sorry, I apologize. What did I just say? Did I just say? Yeah, you you said Ron. But that's oh, okay. I'm it's sorry. A that's yeah. a different guy entirely. Yeah, wasn't he in like? Happy days or something. Happy like days. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it definitely isn't him, unless he's had a real change of career. Uh, Rob <laughs> Howard wrote a piece called "When Is a Discount Really Not Really a Discount?" and it kind of caught my attention because in the UK we had a there was a little bit of a debate a couple of years ago where some of the supermarkets, so you know the likes of Tesco, the equivalent of Walmart, things like that, they were caught. Um, kind of faking discount prices. And so, for example, they would say that a bottle of wine, let's say it was down from £15 and you could get it for, I don't know, for a, a limited time for seven ninety nine. Well, it turns out that the supermarkets were within their rights to put the price of that bottle of wine up for, for like a day. And then for the whole of the rest of the year, they could claim that the reduced rate was a reduction, whereas, in fact, any sort of sensible narrative would say it was the other way around. You know, it, it artificially went up for a day. And uh, robbers, robbers sort of discovered that this behavior is happening in the WordPress plugin space. It's totally legit. There's nothing to stop you doing it. But I'm just curious, and I know for a fact, because I look at this stuff pretty closely, this is pretty rife in the WordPress space. You know, you'll go to a plugin page, you'll see 399 crossed out, and it'll say 299 or something like that. But there's no, there's no, um, there's no way that we can enforce this or really ever discover. Rob goes to the Wayback Machine, and you know, he looks at various different points in the past of these websites and discovers that, yeah, they've been this price forever, and they're sort of artificially creating this. And whilst it's good. You know, it may be good if you're a, if you're a, I don't know, you, you sort of feel like you've got a good deal, or certainly if you're a vendor of one of these things, it kind of feels like a good way to market it. Um, Rob's point is, I'm not sure this is a good idea. It's sort of damaging the ecosystem, and we'll get on to a bit in a minute. Um, probably one of Matt Check's articles from Jonathan Wold um, about whether this is a healthy thing to see. You know, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I think for me, it kind of starts at those back in the 80s where there was those time um, CDs that they would do at like midnight on TV. And you can get all these for you know, not $12.99, not $9.99, but buy them all for like $139. And it's all that whole perceived value 
that really started too back in the um, like early 2000s, early to mid 2000s with the internet marketing, um, like NAMs and uh, places like that, where we push a perceived value, not the actual price of it. it right. Just kind of trickled down into now plugins and places like that will see what the perceived value price is, not what the actual is. And it's just the marketing. Yeah. Jumbo. It is. It's a bit of sort of marketing lingo. My, I think the main point that he's trying to make is that really things like WooCommerce, it's trivially easy for any of us to, to create a store. And then depending on how we are, I don't know, let's, let's use the word morals. Depending on what our morals are, we might adopt this or we may not. Now, does that cause... Does that cause, let's say that you're in competition with a plugin, you're both doing exactly the same thing. You're a forms plugin, they're a forms plugin, they're doing this where they fake the, the sort of reduction, but you're not. You've got the moral high ground, but you may be losing out to people who are sort of like that FOMO thing. Oh, it's a good deal. And then you get things like you see, you know, banners at the top of websites where they put a countdown timer on and then you go back long after the countdown timer ran out and the countdown timer has just started again. <laughs> and you just sort of think, hmm, I'm not so sure about this. And because it's really easy to do, we may get lulled into thinking, well, this is clever marketing. This is what we all must do. I'm not sure. Then what if, we, what if we're breaking laws? He mentions the Connecticut law which says that essentially if your product hasn't been at that price for 28 of the previous 90 days, you are breaking the law. Um, and so it raises problems as to whether or not you selling, I don't know, T-shirts or whatever it might be to the United States. If you're breaking their laws, they might not view that very favorably. Anyway, I've talked enough. I, I personally I think that, people are uh, exhausted. Mm-hmm. I think we're exhausted. Remember when pop-ups worked? Yeah. Everybody had pop-ups on their site and then everybody just got tired of them. And now everybody hates pop-ups, but I think pop-ups are making a comeback like cassette tapes. Um, I think with these sales and the countdown timers, I think we've just kind of, it's lost the mystique and that, that drive, you know, the, this whole concept that they're going to sell out of their plugins. <laughs> Mm, yeah no I, <laughs> as I, if I, there's I, a limited quantity available yes um, that's right i've got a pdf to download but there's only 20 remaining exactly uh, yeah exactly <laughs> scarcity marketing is it's it's great when done well but i think you know you you see it a lot in the wordpress space and not just with plugins but there's this race to the bottom with discounts and, you know, part of the problem is you've got these people that are newer to WordPress and they'll come in thinking that they're, let's say hosting is $3 a month. And let's say it goes, you know, a year in and all of a sudden now they're paying 30 a month. And they're like, you, you bait and switched me. No, that was your coupon length. Yeah. And yeah. so there's some of that too. I think discounting is just, it gets real sketchy real quick, but just as a consumer, I think people are just tired of it. Like, just tell me what the price is. Like, yeah. Well, because also Rob, Rob makes the point that you have no real conception that the price that you're seeing is what everybody else is seeing. Because in a store, you know, selling, I don't know, let's say shirts and what have you, the price is just sort of written on the label. And it's a big job to go around changing all the labels and um, and what have you. But who's to say that if you're in Canada, you might be getting a different price to somebody in the US. You might have put, a, uh, I don't know, some sort of link in so that, oh, you've come from this website, you're going to get 10% off or yeah. it's between these two days. In other words, we can play with it really granularly and we don't really know what we're getting. And there's, there's, um, there's a WordPress company, I won't mention any names, but they, it, it's, it would appear that they're constantly on sale and it just sort of makes me think, well, when it when is it not a sale then? You know, do you do you ever advertise the fact that it's now not on sale for a little while? Well, and, it, and should it, I buy now or is your yeah, discount going to be better next week? That's right. Yeah. And that's a curious one, isn't it? Because if a company that's always got a product on sale then offers it for like, I don't know, instead of it being 10 percent off, it suddenly goes to 20 percent off. Do you feel a bit shortchanged by that? I, I don't know. It's a yeah. Matt check. It sounded like you had something to say. Yeah, I wanted to say because. Um... I mean, 
in Poland always try to save money. So uh, we have many sites that compare prices on different stores. For some reason, there are not uh, such a there is no such product for virtual products yet. But, uh, the thing that all of those price comparers have is the price history. So it's very easy to see if someone is is is, is cheating because let's be honest. Very often, practice like this, especially when we try just to use the FOMO effect and things like this, it's just plain old cheating because it's not doing a sale. It's trying, it's a way of trying to use um, some of our mechanism against us. And, yeah. uh, and especially every year when we have, because yes, of course, we have to adopt Black Friday because it's, a, it's a, such a long Polish tradition. Uh, all those sales are so easy to check and compare. When you look at the history, at the, at the price history, and you see that, yeah, why is this product much more expensive than it usually is? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so, so 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 yeah. Adding those uh, those price histories were one of the best things, and. Let's be honest, doing something like this for WordPress plugins would be also doable. That's so a really, let's... that would be a, that would make a fabulous project for somebody. I, I, right at the outset, I'm going to say it's not going to be me. Um, but some kind of like, pr yeah, price tracker over time where you could see that X plugin has been at this price and then it went up and it went down and mapping that would be really curious. And it would give, it would give you a genuine idea as to whether things had been artificially inflated. Of course, we are, we are around the corner from Black Friday. And I am pretty convinced, Matchek, that you're right, that uh, it, it is, let's say, um, abused sometimes. You definitely get the impression that m the majority of WordPress vendors don't abuse it and you get a genuine discount. But I think there are one or two who, uh, who yeah, push, push it a little bit, shall we say. Okay, that was an interesting one. Um, that was Rob, not Rom, Howard, um, over at Master WP. Go and check that out. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick shout out this one. I don't know if there's much anybody wants to contribute to this, but I was lucky enough to meet Steve, uh, Steve Burge from Publish Press the other day at WordCamp US. Really thoroughly nice chap. And we both have a shared interest in history. So there you go. Um, and and it came to light this week that his company, Publish Press, had acquired uh, a, another uh plugin company called Meta. Well, they acquired a plugin uh, called MetaSlider. They don't really go into what it is that was exchanged in terms of finance. And also, it's kind of curious because I, I, I can't initially see the overlap between MetaSlider, MetaSlider Lightbox, and Publish Press. But um, yeah, hopefully, Steve will make something good out of this. He talks about the fact that he is going to do a lot more work on it. Uh, there's a pro version that they'll continue to sell, and this, there'll be a standalone version focused on images. Um, but it won't be included uh, in any sort of published press package that you may already have. It looks like they're standalone. So just to say, uh, Steve, congratulations. Well done. Um, nice. That's that. Uh, anybody want to contribute on that, or shall I just move on? There's another one making a comeback. Yeah. Oh, sliders okay. were sliders. all the rage. Then nobody yeah. wants you to use sliders, and now I'm starting to see them pop up again. Yeah. So he Not says, "Pop up literally." But no, yeah, a pop up, up slider. Too. Now there's <laughs> a there's <laughs> a, <laughs> a, there's <laughs> a, yes. a pop up slider. All we need to do is wow. make it blinking, and it'll yeah. be pop. <gasps> pop up slider yes. with the blink CSS applied. Um, Steve Woo. says a traditional slider isn't a good fit for a news website for a couple of reasons. <laughs> Um, we aim to tackle those the variety of problems head on. First, to solve the issue, we plan to expand dynamic content features of MetaSlider so that you can easily pull in fresh content. And secondly, we'll focus on the speed of MetaSlider so you don't have to worry about sites being slow. And I think, you know, apart from the UI UX of it, the idea that it would grind your site down in terms of because it would load like 20 images, which were just out of the viewport. Let's see what Steve makes of it. But bravo, Steve. Well done. Um, I hope it's a, a, a marriage made in heaven. That's great. OK, right. Here's something new. Absolutely brand spanking new. I caught sight of this first thing this morning when Michelle Frechette, who, of course, is 
on this show very regularly, um, sent me a message on Slack saying that her, that is to say Michelle Fouchette, and Kathy Zant have started a, a new podcast. It's called WP Motivate, and that is the URL.com, WPMotivate.com. And uh, the idea, and I, I confess, I haven't had time to listen to it today, but the idea is they're going to serve you up on a Monday morning, a very short, so five to 20 minutes uh, of, of content. That's what they're limiting themselves to. So a nice sort of motivational, WordPressy. A uh, piece of content in at the beginning of the week. It says, Kathy and Michelle aim to start each week with some joy, some silliness, and some motivation. And looks like it says here, well, there isn't, as far as I know, there isn't a way to sort of sign up, I don't think, to any list. But if you go to wpmotivate.com, uh, you'll be able to join in their happiness and positivity. So again, bravo. Uh, Michelle, <laughs> it's hysterical when Michelle comes on this show because her bio is crazy long. It's like one thing after another. And uh, now we've got. <laughs> I, I am fairly certain. Well, at least like 20 percent certain that she's a cyborg. Yeah, there's two of her. There is a there is a, there is another one of her somewhere Ooh, else. Yes. That's yeah, her mom that's like right. Said she was the busiest woman in WordPress. That's right. Yes. She was very pleased with that. She was tickled but pink by that. Nathan, I have an important question. Is she planning to like release this to compete with this show? Because we have your back. Oh, we'll sweep I, the leg for you. We'll snap no, and just be just, like, "Yes, it's war. It's full on okay. war." Okay, okay, no, we is, got you. This is the last time this is ever mentioned on <laughs> this show. Um, no, no, it's great, isn't it? I, I mean, it, there's yeah. obviously I don't. I don't know if there'll be any overlap, but it is on the same day. She's, I, she says in the morning, but the first episode is already out, so I don't know quite when the if there'll be a collision in terms of time. But theirs is all pre-recorded, and our recorded version of this goes out on a Tuesday. So yeah, but thank you, Jess. I I appreciate your support. <laughs> got you. I got you. I mean, I love Michelle, but you know, there's only so much love to spread around, isn't there, Jess? Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's great. Well done uh, to WP Motivate, Michelle and Kathy. And look, look at the hosting that they've uh, they've decided to go for. That's a kind of impressive. What mm -hmm. a small logo! Yeah, it's, 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 mean, isn't it? Isn't it, Josh? Yeah. It the, it <laughs> they've done the you proud, Jess. <laughs> it's it's okay. The, the, the placement is great, but can you give me a bit bigger logo? Yeah, Actually. that's right. More cowbell. <laughs> give well, us more logo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was kind of hoping it would be a pop up, but what can you do? <laughs> Sliding <laughs> pop up. One Sliding letter at a time. P R E. That'd be great. Anyway, well done. Well done to the pair of you. I'll, I will add it to my list of. Uh, of um, podcasts which I've got on my phone and hopefully have a listen in the next few days. Okay, right, from one new thing to another new thing. The, genuinely, I think this is a I think this is really interesting. So WP Tavern, Sarah Gooding once again uh, writing an article called SiteGround Launches Managed EDD Hosting. And as soon as I saw this, I just thought why has nobody else done this? This is absolutely fascinating. So how long has it been now? Have So I thought this was new. Tell me, Jess, where I'm wrong. Learn Dash hosting over at Nexus. So that's based around EDD? No, it's a different plug-in altogether. Ah, ah, okay. So that was the piece that I oh, thought was you quite interesting. The, just what? the specificity of the fact oh, that it's EDD. Easy digital yeah. downloads. Yeah. Got so it. yes, yes. So obviously, you know, if you're into the if you're into selling goods, you know, we talked about t-shirts a minute ago, a real a real good thing to do for that would be to go to a managed WordPress company who have a WooCommerce hosting option. And there are absolutely loads of them. You can go, click a button, you've got a store set up right away. But EDD is for digital products. It's for, you know, selling plugins and whatever digital stuff that you happen to have. And it's big. You know, the marketplace around EDD is pretty huge. I think it says something like, what is it? I can't remember. There were some Almost numbers here. Two million here. domains. Yeah. OK. Yeah, I think two million, two, domains, two million domains is the site of site ground. But I think it says on of those 200, oh, yeah. two hundred, sorry, two point eight million, fifty thousand are using uh, EDD. 
That's and it. Yeah. So it's not not huge at the minute, but I did think, well, why, why, is, why has nobody else done this? It just struck me as like a really curious thing. It's a marketplace. If you can click a button and get an, a digital download store set up right away, SiteGround have collaborated here with the new owners of um, Easy Digital Downloads, and they were bought a little while ago, I'm going to say like 18 months, something like that, by Awesome Motive. And um, you can see that Awesome Motive, they're quite happy to upsell their other bits and pieces in there. Uh, which They always can, are. Yeah, they're quite quite good <laughs> at putting the other bits and pieces they've got there. So you'll have to contend a little bit with that. If you go for this, you're going to be cross-sold all their other products, um, Optin Monster and WP Forms and all of that kind of stuff. But I just thought this was a really interesting idea. So it's $2.99 for one website. So that's $2.99 per month for one website, $7.99 for unlimited you you know how this goes, um, but yeah, I just thought I'll this be was curious to see how much more awesome motive on their various content property starts promoting site ground now that they've got this partnership. Yeah, yeah, I wonder. I do wonder it, but I I just thought I would not be surprised if somebody else sort of copies this idea and starts to sell EDD based. Uh, stores because it's a it's a marketplace you've got you've got a direct access to customers and you know if you're building a piece of software or plugins or anything that you can digitally download basically you can do yeah. through edd so i just thought it was a good idea i don't know that edd will be able to make that partnership they probably mm. have something with siteground specifically for this mm. and oh, i'm I sure see. there's there's something you know yeah. some kind of exclusivity um, so you could probably do it with a different plugin, but I'm sure Awesome Motive worked something out with SiteGround specifically for this. Of course, because there's no free variant of EDD, is there? There's just the paid. Uh, there's and nothing also, on the repo. Yeah. When you have that in there, everything else pops up too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. That's a very um, good deal for Awesome Motive. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I feel like SiteGround, if we rewound the clock about six or seven years, it feels like SiteGround were right in the mix and were being talked about all the time. But I, I really haven't heard anything much from them or of them in the last few years. And Michelle, you were saying that you you'd had a you know, you had some sort of insight there. They about four ish years ago had changed their model for how they did uh, support. And there was a big kind of uproar uprising over it. And I know with the support model changing and um, kind of with everyone uh, raising their prices a little bit, I know there was a decent size exodus off of SiteGround. Um, I mean, I'm one of the admins for the WordPress hosting group in um, Facebook. And there was about six months after that happened, there was a lot of talk of people not really recommending um, SiteGround anymore, but it seems in the past like three to six months, they're really trying to remarket themselves back. Um, okay. Kind of like how GoDaddy did about 2015-ish. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, maybe they've had a bit of a PR whoopsie and they're trying to reestablish themselves. Okay. So speaking of this, first of all, hello, Mark Westgard. Nice to have you with us. Appreciate it. Uh, and then Cameron uh, says he can't, so we're talking about awesome motive EDD still. I can't help thinking that this is purely a marketing strategy at this point. Not sure how much uniqueness you can have other than some pre-installed plugins and a few server resources. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Cameron. That's an interesting opinion. Yeah. And Andrew Palmer then follows that up with EDD has only 60,000 users. Now awesome motive is involved. They can do these partnerships. It own, it also only installs a very basic version. Oh, didn't know that. Thank you. EDD does have a free option, but it's worse than useless. Oh, again, thank you, Andrew, for your wisdom. I didn't realize they had a free version. Okay, that's great to know. Um, da, 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 just looking down the comments. No, there's nothing more to add. There's just people saying good morning to each other, which is jolly nice, isn't it? People using the comments to say hi to each other. Okay, well, there you go. I thought that was quite interesting. But um, yeah, right. Very quick plug. I hope you don't oh, mind. Oh, look at that. Ah. SiteGround is now their top managed WordPress hosting provider recommendation on WP Beginner. 
<laughs> well, you couldn't have made it up. Yeah, yeah, you could not have made it up. Um, quick promo, if you don't mind. I'll do this as quickly as possible. Every month or thereabouts, Peach and Eri and I get on the screen, a bit like we are now, and we go through a few websites and look at them. There's user-submitted, and we look at them in terms of UI and UX. That's what Peach does, that uh, day job. She's a UI UX specialist. And so people submit their sites and ask them to be looked at by her. Uh, we've got a few in the bag for this current episode, but if you want it to be featured on another episode, please go here. It's the easiest URL to remember. It's wpbuilds.com forward slash UI, wpbuilds.com forward slash UI. Uh, just submit your name, the URL, and so on. But we're also after any deceptive designs. It used to be called Dark Patterns. Peacher hates them and wants to uh, highlight them wherever she finds them. So if you've, if you've got any dark patterns, please fill out that form and let us know. And uh, hopefully we'll get your website featured on the show. Oh, this is the story of my 2022. I, 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 have, I have no words to express how unbelievably amazed I am by what AI images have done over the last year. If you'd have asked me just a couple of years ago to, to demonstrate the difference between computers and humans, my, or the answer that I tr tr just brought out every time was humans can paint, computers can't. And I haven't got that anymore because now they can do it all the time. You've got all of these things like Dali and Mid Journey. And now a free plugin has come around. Uh, it, and this is again on the WP tab. And the article is called New Block Diffusion Plugin Creates AI Generated Images from Text Prompts. Just as with all the other bits of software, you, you give it some text. So you might say, I don't know, um, I'd like a picture of a dog sitting on a cushion next to a copy of, I don't know, War and Peace or something like that. And you, the more text you give it, the more the greater the chance it has of coming back with an image that you, you like. This is, the plugin is free. It connects with, now let me get this right, with a service called Replicate. You use the Replicate API. Uh, it's one US cent per image, and it takes six seconds to create the image, allegedly. So basically, by the time you've hit enter and slurped your coffee and put the coffee back down, you've got an image. And on the screen here, if you're watching this, you'll be able to see it. Um, the, pr the phrase that was used to generate the image that you see was shift into a new era of human AI art collaboration. And that's what it came up with. I mean, I don't quite understand the connection there. But the point is, I'm, I'm loving all this stuff. And the fact that there's now a block which allows you to do it more or less for free, dare I say that, I just think is super cool. What are your thoughts on this? Is it terrifying? Is it brilliant? Is it, what is it? Both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I mean, uh, I was surprised even before we get to the painting part when. Uh, I had Dan Olson as a guest editor at WP Owls, and after sending me the content and everything, he asked about, uh, did I like everything? And I said, yeah, of course. And he mentioned, yeah, because it was generated uh, in this part by AI. So, so yeah, I have uh, one guest editor that used AI to, to do most of his work. And to be honest, I didn't knew about it so yeah. i also had the chance to talk with people from contendo that are able to using ai to convert for example the talk we are having here to uh to an article not just the transcript and the dialogue uh, article and create some bits for social media and everything and i was like yeah amazing so um so with paintings it's it's the same it's but as, as you mentioned uh we saw the description and we saw the end result it was it was beautiful but i also didn't see the connection so those descriptions and the end result are sometimes weird uh 
still the form of uh, of everything that we write and what what we get back. It's 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 much better. But in a year, in a two, it will be much much better. And um, yeah, you, you can I imagine mean, on, on the one hand. A... Sorry, go on. I can't. I can't. I can't imagine yeah. <laughs> because yeah. this this is also the thing that that you mentioned a few years ago. I wouldn't thought that AI will be capable of so many things. I mean, for me still, uh, one of the biggest things about AI is uh, the Google, what, the whole engine be, that uh, based on which Google Translate works. It's really, really amazing to see how it learned speaking Polish because Polish is quite difficult. Polish is very difficult and uh, it has some small nuances that were uh, always very, always difficult to come from English. And right now, it just works. <laughs> but yeah. we need to understand this, the sentence. Without it, it would be just impossible. And AI made it happen. I so, think I... yeah, I, I, I just can't imagine what will happen in a year. But it will probably be more amazing and more scary. <laughs> yeah, I think I've had to push my definition back of what of what a computer can do more now. So before it was, it can't create art. And I've had to abandon that because clearly it can. And so my definition has had to go a little bit further back to say, well, it can't conceive of the art. You know, it, it needs a prompt. If you just went off and said create me a piece of art i still think it would flounder i don't know maybe there's a maybe there's a default setting where it'll just come up with something completely random of course that's a that's a possibility as well but i just think this is so interesting it terrifies me and makes me incredibly joyful at the same time Matt check because i i kind of worry on the back of all this about the like the jobs um, so I'm thinking in this case, you know, people who, whose living has been to do this kind of thing. And I imagine being an artist is a, is a, is a difficult thing to, to manage anyway. And now where at the cost of a cent, you can create something which may take a, let's say a human artist hours, weeks, maybe months even to create, uh, the economics sort of stack up very much in favor of the AI, don't they? If you're looking for, I don't know, thumbnail art or something like that to go with on your posts, I imagine the days of paying artists to do that are slightly numbered. We do have Andrew Palmer in the comments, and he's got Bertha AI, which is doing the same thing for text. I've got a feeling maybe, Andrew, you could speak to this, maybe you're adding some of these image capabilities in as well. But um, Michelle or Jess, any thoughts? I think there'll be a mix where it you'll possibly have like the more uh, like for websites for your featured image and uh, things like that of maybe being moved to of using AI. But when it comes to like the art of the actual like physical prints, painting stuff like that, you're not just buying the um, item, but you're buying the story behind it as well. Mm. Interesting. Jess. It just makes me think of the um, the meme where you see what a $10 tattoo looks like next to a $1,000 tattoo. <laughs> I'm guessing that the $10 tattoo is inferior. <laughs> it's it's not a tattoo that you want. Okay. It's really yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. It's derp lion versus like crazy lion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you that, you know, I, I am personally not an artist, but I know artists and to watch them work is nothing short of magical. Yeah. And while AI is coming so far and it's so good for these sorts of situations, I think the people that it's going to bring are people that wouldn't have already like chosen artists. It's the same people looking for, you know, cheap and free themes. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking for cheap and free art. Interesting. I guess I guess this probably has played out in the history of every form of technological innovation. So, you know, when yeah. Jethro Tull invented his machine, which allowed farmers to plant seed en masse, 
presumably a lot of people who were previously employed to literally go and scatter seed, they they had to find other things to do. And that forced migration of labor, if you like, probably led to all sorts of people who would have been throwing seed for the rest of their lives, going off and finding something, you know, something else to do. And you imagine that working in a bank 60 years ago, there would have been hundreds of people with great big ledgers totting up all the numbers and they've all gone because somebody invented the spreadsheet but it didn't it didn't seem to put everybody out of work and there's a bit of me which thinks yeah stop being so doom and gloom nathan it's fine and just enjoy it for what it is but it it, it does I, yeah i think nathan or excuse me uh, nathan andrew just came in with a great comment that would be my follow-up um i think that ai is absolutely fascinating and where it's going but you know like he says here so andrew says there will be ai experts who will create on your behalf luddites were concerned when automatic weaving machines were invented yeah i think you just broadly made the same point as me didn't you andrew about you know technological innovation um frees up people to do other things and uh yeah it, 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 I guess whenever, whenever the the bedrock of things which you're which you've grown up thinking about, you know, that's the normal way of doing it. Whenever those those things get shattered, it makes you pause a little bit, and the the assumption is always a bit of panic. Everything's going to go wrong and horrible, and it, it on the whole, it doesn't seem to do that. So, just as another thing, if you are a a Bertha user, Andrew's just said that this image generation will be in Bertha. Uh, from next week. Andrew, I wonder if you could tell us um, how that works. In other words, if you're a Bertha user on a subscription at the minute, because it's a typically it's a, they have a free tier, but you know they also have a paid offering. Uh, do you have to sort of buy image credits, or can you use your text credits that you're currently using and swap them over? Let, let us know. Um, and he's added one more little comment. Art will still WX sauce. I don't know what he meant there and be much more valuable too, made by humans, will have a bigger price tag. This is the time for me to become an artist. I can feel my calling now. I'm going to sell an my artist art. or an AI artist? <laughs> no, a real artist. I'm going to, I'm going to, well, Andrew said I'm going to put a bigger price tag on it. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be rich beyond my wildest dreams with stick men drawings. Right. Well, also, look at just the big change in story in the past 10 years mm. of where a lot of the more big box chain stores now have um, where you have to check out yourself and they don't have any cashiers and then I was at a grocery store and they have a little robot now that will go in the lanes to scan the shelves for um, inventory wow huh. if you don't know <laughs> one's coming up behind you will startle the snot out of you <laughs> I, I do sort of wonder if um, if the, the destiny of humans is basically to be like those those creatures in uh, Wally. Do you remember the film Wally, mm -hmm. where they, they they fly up on the spaceship and they they encounter this race of humans, sort of like five thousand, ten thousand years in the future, and they've <laughs> they're basically capable of sitting in a sofa and consuming drinks, and that's kind of their purpose in life. Maybe. Maybe that's what we want. We want everything to be comfortable and easy and a click of a button. Um, Michelle, by the way, threw this article at us right at the end of last week. It might not have been Michelle. I can't remember. Uh, but it came on last week's show. And I just wanted to point it out one more time. It's a really interesting article. Uh, it's Adrian R. Uh, Roselli. Adrian Roselli, sorry. Um, and it's, it's fascinating because he takes alt images. Sorry, he takes alt text from images and then he puts them back into the art the generators and he sees what comes out and you, it's really fascinating oh my so, god that's so, amazing oh it's so clever so he here's the first one right so he shows you this and and the, the human written alt text is a cartoon uh, kawaii slice of toast with happy eyes open sm smiling mouth and reddish cheeks there is a splatter of blood coming to the top of the toast similar to the watchman logo you know it's a pretty good description of what we're looking at and then he feeds it into all these different ai creation tools so that exact piece of alt text and he gets <laughs> it's just like so different so here's one this is what crayon c r a i y o n gives you uh, and it's just <laughs> it's, it's kind of hit the nail on the head 
Uh, then uh, Mid Journey gives you, gives you this, which kind of look like little avatars for toast. Apples. This escalated very quickly. <laughs> look at this one. I mean, it's just like, what the heck? It's so good. Uh, this is the Apple uh, alt text fed into crayon. So this is Apple read the image and created its own alt text. And then finally, uh, Apple's text. That's beautiful, though. Mm. I mean, whether or not you whether or not you think that's hysterically wide from the mark. It's absolutely beautiful. I suggest that you go and read this article. It's really interesting reading. But one of the things that it brings to bear is, please, please make your alt text uh, actually usable on your websites. If you've got any, you know, for, for all the right reasons, accessibility and lots of other reasons, make the, make the alt text actually say what's in the image. And um, just sort of connecting that, a friend of mine, um, well, I say a friend of mine, somebody reached out to me, John Dorner sent me an email this week, uh, but by pure coincidence, it overlaps with this article. He's got two new plugins, and the first one is called Fix Alt Text. You can find it on the repo. These plugins are both free. It's called Fix Alt Text, and it gives you um, prompts where images throughout your website, if you've missed this, it will find images with no alt text on them so that you can go back and fit, backfill, retrofit your website so that the alt text is there. Very, very important for accessibility purposes. Um, it doesn't just, oh, it does. It, anyway, the point is good for SEO, good for accessibility. Um, and if you don't know which images haven't got alt text, this plugin will surface those for you. And the other one that he's got is called Where Used. And this will take more or less everything in your WordPress website. So attachments, posts, links, blocks, and it, images, all sorts of different things. And it will tell you um, where in the website it's actually used. So that little image in the media library, which is like four megabytes, that's not used anywhere, well, where used will tell you that it's not being used. And so you can delete it. So I think this is, anyway, bravo to... Uh, to John Dormer. So quickly surface those. Oh, this is one of my favorite plugins, ACF, Advanced Custom Fields. I'm so happy that Elliot Condon all those years ago uh, created this. I use it virtually everywhere. It's one of those things that gets thrown on a website more or less straight away, for me at least anyway. Um, it recently got taken over um, and I want to say it was Delicious Brains that bought it. That's right, isn't it? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it was Delicious Brains. First and Delicious Brains and then WP then, Engine bought Yeah, Delicious of course. Brains. Then WP Engine then acquired the majority of the Delicious Brains plugins. Thank you, Matt Check. That's great. Um, and they've decided that it's time to give it a bit of an overhaul. The UI, they felt, was a little bit too, well, not too Busy, but just a bit too spacious. There was a lot of space given over to things that really didn't need that much space. I have to say, I love it. I really like it. This is version six. And essentially what they've done is they've created this article where they show a before and after. And in every case that I've looked at on this page, I think, yeah, really nice job. So they've, they've gotten rid of things that didn't really need to be there. They've added tabs and so on. But uh, essentially, they've just tried to minimize it. So this UI, which you can see, that's the old way of doing things. Lots of space used up, lots of unnecessary things there that you didn't really need. It's now being compressed to something which looks a little bit like this with accordions that open and close. And just to say to the guys over at um, WP Engine, Delicious Brains, ACF, whatever it is, uh, bravo. I think you've done a, a really nice job. You guys using stuff like ACF? Do you ever yes. stray into this? Yeah, yes, use the ACF course. a lot at our agency. Is it like the default? Has it been the default forever and ever like it has for me? Yes. Yeah, it's kind of just one of those things that gets thrown in. Well, you'll be delighted when you click update on your website. I don't know if you've had a play with it yet, but um, certainly from the screenshots, I haven't uh, updated and had a look at it on a live site yet, but uh, it looks like they've done a really nice job. So thank you first to Elliot Condon and then for all the other people who've had their hands on it. Okie dokie. Right, let's go to this one. iThemes, security. I don't really know much about this. Maybe you guys are more um, te technological in terms of security than I am. But this is Kathy Zant writing. Oh, we've mentioned Kathy already. She's got. She's getting in, getting in the show a lot today. Um, <laughs> this is all about web auth. Now I don't know how even to pronounce this. It looks like you say web author or web auth n. I don't really know. But um, iThemes 
they claim uh, at the top of this article to be the a groundbreaking release, the first of its kind in the WordPress space. They're enabling you to use a different way to log into your website, this WebAuthN or WebAuthn. Um, and the idea is that instead of using usernames and passwords, which every website has done forever to log in, that's obviously vulnerable because it literally can be stolen. And if it's stored in an insecure way or somebody manages to crack the cipher, which is, um, which is holding your hashed version of the password, for example, you can be compromised. The idea here is that it defers that logging in capability to things like your browser or your fingerprint reader on your phone. So it becomes the, the conduit. And you, you're going to trust your phone, right? Because it's yours. So I, I just think this is a really nice idea. I tried the implementation out on one of my websites, and it lodged something into my browser. I'm using Chrome or Brave. And from that moment on, I've been able to log in by clicking something in the browser that just says, is this really you or something like that? And it just gets rid of that little bit of friction. I think this stuff's really cool, but I'm not really an expert on how it all works. So if any of you guys understand it better, please educate me. I I can share. Um, at Pressable, one of the most common feature requests is a different way to handle 2FA. Okay. I mean, there are so many different options now, and everybody's got their favorite. Um, you know, people are using different clients. Um, some people are saying, well, you can't use this one because it locks you into this, and I need this instead. And I think it's really great that, you know, the World Wide Web Consortium is finally coming out with some kind of guideline. And this appears to be what they're going to be pushing everyone to. Um, I read about it. And one really cool thing that I saw that is neat is it's going to help prevent phishing attacks. So right. it's going to prevent you from yeah. being able to, you know, have one of those fake login pages. Um it's going to be really interesting to see if this is accepted as a universal standard um, because there's a whole lot of money in all these different solutions. And I don't think they're going to mm. go down without a fight. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's thing? true because there are so many, so many ways uh, to store your passwords in a secure way. And um, yeah, as, 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 you, as you mentioned, there's, it's a business. It's a huge business. Uh, and it's not only about logging in into our websites. It's also about our bank accounts that also have some more complicated ways. It's also about uh, using some other applications, for example, our FTP client and how connected with our uh, client, uh, with our password vault. Uh, and it's also about all the uh, file configurations. For example, wp-config. Everyone who has access to it can see our password. So it would be great to store it in some way so no one can see it because it's... So yeah, it's, it's, it's a big business and it's also... It's, there is a lot to do about it. So I think that... Uh, but yeah, it would be great to have some universal way to and yeah have, have, having a yeah. browser taking it over or a system together with the browser because uh, it would be even better because we are not doing everything in the browser uh yeah it would be great but uh, i also would, would have to need uh, to read more about implementation of it because the only thing that i saw it's uh, that that's compatible with the uh, w w3 uh, specification and that's all. Yeah, we should say that this isn't so. The the protocol which Jess just mentioned, uh, it's mm -hmm. not so. The the, the underlying technology. Th this is not i themes. They're just implementing something yeah. which has been created by some fairly big hitters. I, I can't actually find. Oh, here we are. So you know some of these some of these small companies you may have heard of: Apple, Google, Microsoft, um, Mozilla. Uh, and yeah. a company you actually may not have heard of, uh, Yubico, which creates these things. I don't know if you've, you've probably all got one of these, but it's like a key. Uh, it's called a Yubi key, and it um, offers, it's like a keyboard on a USB drive, and it enables me to sort of hide 
behind a very, very long password, certain things. But the point is, all of it's inconvenient. Usernames and passwords are inconvenient. I've got a password manager. I use LastPass. I'm sure you've all got different things. So that I can try to be as secure as possible. But effectively, what I'm doing is just creating a brand new password for every ser- service that I log into. And that's what I've been doing for, ye- I don't know, 10 years or more. Brand new, super long, ridiculously difficult, uh, actually impossible to remember password. But, but then I'm- also, I just need that one password and I've got all your passwords. Exactly. So the giant problem there is that if you crack and on the other glass- hand, what yeah. will happen... Or what will happen if at, if someday last last pass will say, yeah, sorry, it was our last day. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Oh um, my gosh, that's the scariest thought. Why would you? <laughs> Honestly, I'm doomed. I'm totally I'm giving up. <laughs> um, the implementation this of last pass is this is, is hopefully you've yeah, got because... the data anyway, but. Um, because it sends you a little blob every time you, you? Um, every time you save something, it, you know it's it's held locally and it's a little blob of data, and you can download that. And hopefully, if LastPass did go out of business and you needed to go for a rival, but it does feel to me like things like LastPass, One Password, they tackle the problem of usernames and passwords impeccably. It's brilliant, but I cannot see the I cannot see usernames and passwords being the future. The the fact that I've oh, all right so. Let's imagine that I've got biometric data, in this case, my thumbprint. Let's say that that is the thing that I've decided I'm going to be logging in with. Obviously, if somebody comes and forcibly applies my thumb to a device, then the whole thing's blown apart anyway. But I I feel I'm just not living in that universe. I am not James Bond. (laughs) Let me say that sentence again. (laughs) I am not James Bond. Nobody's going to be breaking my door down to get my thumbprint. I'm protecting myself just because I don't want hackers to accidentally access something. You know, they're not coming after me, but they might scoop me up in the in the trove of data that they steal from elsewhere. But I just think this is really interesting. It's but a really it, interesting but you can development. Cut your finger. You can cut your finger. You can still cut oh. your finger, and it may be a problem for, for some readers. I, yeah, I I've know- noticed... Yeah, if I go play tennis and I come back with like a sweaty finger that, or a sweaty thumb, it doesn't work. I have to sort of dry it all off. And yeah, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, so and this is web auth. Mm. And what we found out with security when it comes to the facial recognition is go through a pandemic and try to hold up your phone. <laughs> and so oh. you're sitting there and you're like, it's <laughs> yeah. get it to work. I, I'm never, I've never trusted a device with my face yet i've gone for the do you know what to be to be honest it was only about two years ago that i gave a phone my thumbprint i was being much more of a luddite i was quite happy to type in a six digit code to unlock my phone and then eventually i thought i'll sack it let's just give it my thumb and uh and then as soon as i did it i was like why haven't i been doing this but i can't quite bridge the gap to doing my face i just think that's that's too too easy for me once you Um, if you are an apple user once you get up to what is it like the iphone 8 or 9 uh it has to do the facial recognition it won't do the thumbprint anymore okay yeah i'm on i'm on android and uh, my understanding is the implementation of the facial recognition is is not as robust as the uh the Apple version. So yeah, it just seems a bit too weird. I just don't like the idea of somebody coming over with my phone and just pushing it into my face and going, ha, ah, I've got your phone. It's mine now. Um, anyway, curious, but thank you to, I uh, nearly said iTunes, um, iThemes for implementing this. The article is called Passwords Are Broken. Web Auth N is the new standard for authentication. Go and see if you can make sense of it. Um, better than I at least anyway so there we go that's that piece right let me just share me share me screen where are we going next oh yeah a couple of quick things to mention first one is that uh the guys over at visual compute composer we had writers on not that long ago on the podcast and uh they're offering 25 percent off um it's a as far, as far as I remember, it's like a back to school thing. The URL certainly seems to indicate that. Uh, I'll leave the link in the show notes, but it's at visualcomposer.com forward slash back dash to dash school. And uh, yeah, 25% off. Don't know until when, but anyway, there you go. Bit of a deal. And right, just match for check. the first year. 
Oh, is it just for the for, thank you? Good clarifier. Okay, I didn't see that anywhere, but okay. Oh, yeah, it says for yeah. first year. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All righty, Matchet, you shoved a few articles into the show notes that you wanted us to highlight this week. Um, we've got a little bit of time. We've got about 10 minutes, so we may cover off a couple of them, if that's all right with you. Firstly, the mm -hmm. Sir Jonathan, Jonathan Wold, uh, has written a piece called Are WordPress Product Businesses Undervalued? Why have you surfaced this one? You obviously enjoyed reading it this week. Yeah, I mean... Uh... It is kind of true because, especially when when, when I think about uh, those small businesses, and for example, ACF, I think a ACF was kind kind of this like, example when it's a great product, and for some reason Elliot had to sell it because he was too small. He wasn't making enough money to start building a whole company around it, right? So I kind of agree with this that. Especially that many plugins are started by people who just want to solve their own problems. At some point, they realize that, oh, it's not only my problem. Let me try to monetize it. And at some point, a big company comes in and either bots you or creates a similar solution and you're out of the market. Um, Jonathan is a key proponent um... I think one of the things that he's been talking about for a fairly long time is the fact that he he mm -hmm. thinks that the the market can bear higher prices for WordPress products. Let's just put it that way. And the 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 example of ACF is just is perfect, isn't it? Because Elliot was selling mm -hmm. that for life, so lifetime. I know access. I have it. I have one. Yeah, I have one. like I think it was fifty dollars, wasn't it? Forty nine dollars or something. I even had it a bit cheaper because I bought just one plugin for ACF. Uh, at the point where there wasn't the whole ACF Pro uh, bundle, yeah. So I I remember that I bought the gallery or flexible content for a few dollars, and at some point he converted it to lifetime, and I was like, okay. Yeah, it's interesting because when you go out into the SaaS marketplace and you look at what SaaS products are charging, you know, it's very typical to see like ninety nine dollars a month for a, a service which does one thing and mm -hmm. does one thing well. But you really in the in the WordPress plugin marketplace, that's the kind of figure that you're looking at paying annually for something which may deliver the exact same amount of value, and um, and so his his sort of key indicators, it, you, the three key reasons he feels that um, mm -hmm. product businesses are being undervalued in the WordPress space is I'll I'll summarize them just by the, the titles. He says um, misaligned monetization. Uh, limited distribution. And this third one, I think, speaks to me the most. It says inexperienced leadership. Um, what I mean by that, I think, is what you just said about Elliot. He um, he was an extremely capable uh, developer who obviously was able to create this fabulous product, but maybe um, he didn't have the, he didn't have the how to describe it without offending Elliot. He, he didn't have the desire to market it as a product. He was a coder and that's what mm. he wanted to do. And turning exactly. that into a profitable company was difficult. So yeah, I, I feel there's a lot of sense in this. Part of me thinks, isn't it great? A lot of WordPress things are really cheap so I can get a lot of value out of them for relatively small amounts of money. But on the flip side, if I was a developer, I think Jonathan's piece, which is, look, guys, should we start charging a reasonable amount? Um, the, the market can cope with it. I think there's a lot of sense in what he says. Anything else from Jess or um, Michelle on this? That's okay. Shall we... <laughs> Should we move on? <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna let Michelle talk. She did like a big sigh. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. you, I you, you go like, first. Three things go through my head at the same time. Can't say one of them. Um, With bundles are great in a way when it comes to uh, getting everything you need, but a lot of times I've found on myself personally is I don't need all of that stuff. Um, like I'm going to pick on one of the more famous, infamous, however you want to look at it, um, themes that a lot of like 
businesses who don't want to hire um, developers and just kind of want all the bells and whistles. The Vada theme, where it comes with the uh, number of plugins already built in and stuff like that. Nine times times out of 10, you don't need all of those items. And so they're just adding people along to your site or uh, for, forgive me for anyone who thinks I may have sinned of Jetpack. A lot of newer users like to use that plugin, but only use like a quarter of the features on it. And I'm not saying that they're bad or good, but I am more of, let me just get the features that I need and um, give, um, Kind of went back and forth with this as well on do we want to just buy the items per piece or bundle everything together and WooCommerce did as well. I'm more of a component of let me get the things I need instead of bundle all the things together. Thank you. Jess? I think I'm going to pass on this one. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Um, <laughs> I, I think my my gut feeling, though, is that Jonathan has probably got the right idea here. I've got a feeling that in the in the future, it it's quite likely that a lot of the price points that we see now, forty nine ninety nine, those kind of things, I think they will start to creep up as people realise that there is actually money in the ecosystem and maybe. Maybe people are prepared to pay a decent amount of money for something which does one thing and does it really well, as opposed to what you were just saying, Michelle. You know, you get one thing which does a ton of things but doesn't do potentially any of them really well. Jonathan Wold can be found at jonathanwold.com. Uh, is a big proponent of this kind of thing. But the article goes into not just what the problem is, but he also sort of offers a few solutions. Um, and he's not just coming at it from the buyer's point of view, he comes at it from the seller's point of view as well. So he's trying to, he's trying to create um, knowledge as to how, if you are a plugin developer, uh, you can get you know, a higher valuation for your bits and pieces. Um, and yeah, there we go. All right. Right, we'll make this one the last one. Um, this is Matchek once more. You've given us this piece. Um, I confess, Matt, I threw this in the show notes right at the last moment, so I don't even know anything about it other than Kinster have got a piece called A New Era of Developer-Centric Hosting is Coming. What is this about? In, in short, Kinsta at the moment is, WordPress, is, is, a, is, is a WordPress hosting company. That's it. They are great at hosting WordPresses. And that's it. And and they decided to do something more. So they are working on uh, on a way to host other applications um. written not only in P and written not only in PHP. They can be written in Node, Python, whatever. Uh, I already have uh, the the guest access. Uh, the, the, the beta version access. So I had the chance to play around with it. It's a bit, it's still a bit rough around the age, uh, the edges, but I think if, if Kinsta will be able to have the same level of, um, of, of, of user help of documentation and everything, because let's be honest, at some point, all the managed hostings are kind of similar. There are things, there, there are those small things that set set them apart. And if Kinsta will be able to do it, they this can be something something really enormous for them. I'm kind of curious about this actually. Okay, so first of all, thank you for explaining. I didn't realize that's what this was about, but um, I, I wonder. I my guess is that they're successful but they wish to be more successful. And obviously, you know, there's only so much of the WordPress market that you can hoover up because of all the competition in there. But if you can position yourself to go outside of the WordPress market, then obviously there's a greater pie to have a slice of. But it does make me wonder. I associate Kinsta with WordPress, and that's all. You know, it's just WordPress is a... Sorry, Kinsta is a WordPress thing. In the same way that I do for Pressable, and let's say WP Engine and all of those different companies. I wonder if this will dilute the the punch of the marketing, if you know what I mean. You know, in other words, no if, way. If, no, 
Tell me more. No way. Just- this is infrastructure as a service. It's brilliant. Um, it's basically the backwards way of going about it than Liquid Web and Nexus did. Um, because remember, they offer way more than just WordPress. Right. And so there were lots of other ways to do these sorts of things, whereas Kinsta is using, you know, Google's platform to allow you to do a whole lot more. Um, and remember, they've got a lot of freedom because they don't actually own any servers. They don't have to deal with any of that. They're just the middleman. Um, so they can extend in all kinds of ways where the management is concerned. Um, but what Kinsta does very, very well is they're gorgeous and they're easy to use. <laughs> um, they're just so pretty. I swear to God, I want to steal their whole design team. Um, <laughs> but, but they do a really good job of taking something that would be pretty difficult if you were to just buy your own server and make your own weird mishmash, which by the way, is where a lot of these headless applications are going. Um, they're doing all kinds of complicated things. They're turning sites mm-hmm. into like six different sites. And um, I think I think it's very smart. So you you see this as like a bright a bright horizon for them, and it, you don't think there'll be a confusion like Kinsta isn't just WordPress; it's a bit of everything else. No, you think they'll be able to separate. No, I think all out. I think this is for people who use WordPress that also need to do other things. Mm-hmm. Um, and Matchet, you thought it was yeah, good, but still I- beta. Yes, it's still beta, but um, Ocean is very, very solid. So um, the tech part is great. It's really great. There are some things still missing, like uh, there is no CLI, which would be great to use together with some CI CDs and things like this. Uh, But still, it's working. It's still so the hardest part. It's okay. There are Joe was curious. Some small things. Uh, of course, it's a bit more complicated to use than to use fault. It was for them. It was here. You have everything. And I mean, then install WordPress because what yeah. Do you do? Matchet, you're you I guess it's fairly I, I, timely, Matchet. You're you're sort of breaking up now. So, is anybody else getting Matchek breaking up? I am. He's breaking um, up on oh, me too. Yeah, sorry, Matchek. But it's perfect timing because we've basically come to the end anyway. The show is like we're out of time essentially. So perfect time for you to break up. You've hung on in there. Uh, just one quick thought. It's a good job that uh, Kinster has that name because I guess if you're called WP Engine uh, or yeah. anything else, you know, that's a big pivot, isn't it? <laughs> the changing. For WP Engine, this would have to be presumably some kind of rebranded thing. Um, so anyway, good luck to them. And thank you, Matt Check, for surfacing that. I do apologize. We've overrun a little bit. I hope I haven't kept any of that. Yes, quite right, <laughs> Jess. She knows what's coming. Uh, Michelle has no idea what I'm about to do to her. Uh, Michelle, at the end of every show, we just put both hands up and just wave them for a few seconds so that I can use it on the... Oh, look, she's totally into it. <laughs> Matt Check. Come on, Matt Check. He's breaking off. Oh, we're going to have a handless Matt Check. Oh, no, that's the first time. Oh, quick. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have overrun. I do apologize. Big <laughs> thanks to Jess. Thanks for talking to us today once more. And Matt Check's still going for it. Um, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll be coming back on. I really time. did. Oh, thank you. And uh, Matt Check, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you can hear me. Let's hope your connection hasn't completely died. And we will be back this time next week with some other fabulous guests talking more about WordPress. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. Have a good week.